Hello, we are here for More Happier, a podcast where we get more happier. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi, Grudge. Today we'll talk about an unexpected consequence from some TV watching we did, and we'll talk about why my dimmer system made me laugh. But Elizabeth, I want to point out that for people watching on YouTube, I am wearing the happiness shirt that mom gave me. Yes, I love that. I love the rainbow happiness. Looks pretty. I'll put a link in the show notes. And also, I want to report on the great more happier debate. Several people emailed to say, no, I get it. I think it's funny. (laughs) Keep it up. So Potato, potato, Grudge. I guess we'll just feel our way (laughs) as we go. (laughs) But speaking of more happier, what is something making you more happier, Elizabeth? Okay, something making me more happier is my smile necklace. So you're wearing your happiness t-shirt. I am wearing my smile necklace. For anyone on YouTube, um, to show it, it's a Tiffany smile necklace. Oh, and I'll put a photo in the show notes too for oh, somebody who's not on YouTube. Yeah. And this was Adam and Jack's birthday present for me. And I love it because one, I love necklaces. And two, yes. It was very thoughtful of them to get me the smile necklace to go along with our happier podcast. So I just thought it was such a thoughtful gift. Well, one thing is uh, Adam gave you a necklace maybe 10 or 15 years ago that that has a circle on it that you wear all the time. Yes. Um, He's good at picking out jewelry you like. Some people love a theme. Like, Alyssa, you love a theme and you're giving me a salt t-shirt and a ketchup t-shirt and a color spectrum stationery and all this. But Adam, not not so much. So this this is kind of an unusual move for him. Yes. And can I just tell you something funny, Gretch? So, you know, we have this ongoing conversation you and I do about being clutter blindness, I think it's called, when you just don't notice clutter around you. So it's not that you're willingly trying to bother the person you live with by not throwing away Coke cans or shutting cabinets. You just don't see it. Okay, well, as an example of this... We went out for dinner on my birthday, and Adam said, we put your present out on the counter, and you didn't even notice it. You didn't even see it was there. I just wanted to see if you would notice it. But was it, like, wrapped with a bow or something? The funny thing is it was in, like, a blue Tiffany bag, which is the most conspicuous thing, (laughs) right? Everybody yeah. knows when you see a yes. blue Tiffany bag yes. that there's going to be something you like inside, right? So it's just, and it's so bright. Right. And also, that's the kind of thing where you're the one who would have bought it. So if you didn't buy it, it's for you. Yes. You know. No, exactly. Had I seen on my birthday a blue Tiffany bag on the counter, I would have been like, oh, birthday gift. But I, to this clutter blindness, I did not even notice it. And I probably walked back and forth by it at least six or seven times. So um, anyway, as soon as I came home, of course, I went straight for it and I um, opened it. But I just thought, well, in the ongoing debate, I mean, more evidence. No, I mean, it's really, I mean, I write about this in Outer Order, Inner Calm, where I think for people who are sensitive to it, we sort of don't realize that someone else could just not be sensitive to it. Yes. And it and it is just, and this is a perfect example. It's not, so, it's it's like when people are always late, I'm like, well, have they ever missed an important meeting? Have they ever missed it, an airplane flight? Because if they haven't, then they're sort of choosing to be late. But if they've right. missed an important flight or something, it's like, yeah, they just, they just have a, a, an issue and it's, it's beyond just a choice, a choice. Yeah. Or, or it's just, it's just at a different, it's just a different kind of challenge. Oh, well, I love that. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. And I didn't even know it's, it's called a smile necklace or just is in the shape of a smile. Yeah. Scratch. That's what it's called. The Tiffany smile pendant, I believe. Oh, so, so yes. appropriate. Now what's making you more happier? Okay. So so, you know, Liz, Eliza graduated from college and she has all these friends who are like doing a million cool, interesting things. And some of them are trying to make a movie together. And she's mm. friends with a woman who's an actor in this independent movie that a bunch of kids are making. So she happened to be coming to our house. Apparently, our living room, she thought, would be perfect as a location for a scene, an important scene in the movie. So, you know, she asked Eliza and Eliza asked Jamie and me, could they shoot in the, in our house? And I was like, Sure. But Eliza's like, hey, look, this is serious. This isn't somebody with an iPhone. They're going to have lights. They're going to have cameras. There's going to be multiple people. It's going to be a whole (laughs) day. It's going to be a big production. And I was like, 
Sure, that's fine. That's great. Just tell me the day in advance and we'll figure out how to get them in our building. Because getting in and out of our building, Elizabeth, as you know, is a little bit of a, we don't have a doorman, so it's a little bit of a thing. So sure enough, they come and it's, you know, I don't know how many people, at least six, maybe eight, maybe 10, tons of equipment. Elizabeth, you can imagine what, you know, lights and clips and stands and booms and all sorts of stuff. We just stayed out of their way. So anyway, so they come, they do the whole thing, they get everything out, and very politely and considerately, they left a card, like a thank you card, where they all had signed it. You know the way you do if you're in an office and everybody writes a little birthday message? So it's like, thank you for letting us use your apartment. So they did that. And the thing that cracked me up was somebody who said only, you had a lovely dimmer system. (laughs) And it just cracked me up because we do have it. I love dimmers. I am just like, love, love, love dimmers. And when we moved into this apartment and when we did any renovations, I was like, let's put everything on dimmers. And all the lights in our living room are on dimmers. And, but nobody appreciates this. Nobody knows this. This is just my right. idiosyncratic thing. But I thought, here's this guy. I knew it was a guy because he signed his name. And I was like, here's somebody for whom my dimmer system made his life so much yes. easier and he appreciates it. I just cracked up. So I called Eliza and I was like, oh, this one line really made me laugh. And she said, when I saw that card, I knew that would crack you up. Oh, that is so funny. And I'll put in the show notes, I'll put images. Because just seeing it in his handwriting, because everybody else is like, thank you. Oh, what a yes. lovely home. We so appreciate it, blah, blah. And it was just, you had a lovely dimmer system. I mean, it just cracks me up. He's probably in charge of lighting, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. He used your dimmer system in some way that made his life easier. I'm guessing, uh, right? Right. It must, it's must. it got to be, because who else would even notice? That's yeah, exactly. Funny. That's so but funny. Made me happy that our apartment could, uh, <laughs> could come in handy. Well, we'll have to see. I want to see that scene, of course, Gretch. Oh, yeah. Someday. I know. We got. I hope together. they let us know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll get a like special thanks at the end of the movie. You know? Yes. Yeah. Okay, coming up, Gretchen and I are going to share some unintended consequences, some good unintended consequences. But first, this break. So, Elizabeth, you told me to watch the Get Back documentary, the Beatles documentary. And, of course, I resisted it. And then finally I watched it. Then I was obsessed with it. Watched it. Watched more documentaries, read some books. Can't get enough. So fascinated by the Beatles, listening to their music. I think it's fair to say that you and I did not anticipate how enthralled we were going to become with just like the Beatles in their process. We were not, we're yeah. not huge Beatles fans. We're not. Yeah, not I mean, Beatles I fans. love the Beatles, but it's really sure. watching their creative yeah. process that I think drew yeah. both of us in and just, yes. as you said, enthralled us. So all of this was happening, as our listeners know, because I think we've talked about it at least five times. So many times. times. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's sick of hearing it. Yeah. But then a couple of weeks ago, Chuck, our wonderful podcast producer, mentioned that he was going to see Paul McCartney. And you and I, not being like totally attuned to the music scene, didn't even realize Paul McCartney was touring And we started looking up dates and realized that he was playing in New Jersey like the first week that Jack is out of school. And I have to say, I just looked it up out of idle curiosity. Does the idea that Paul McCartney is touring, he seems sort of beyond the the realm of being able to show up someplace in person. Though actually now I realize I was at a restaurant five years ago and Paul McCartney was there and I didn't think much of it. Now I would be like, oh my gosh, this is Paul McCartney. But yeah, but the idea that he was on tour blew our minds. But then, Elizabeth, you get the gold star because you had this extraordinary idea. Yeah, I was just thinking I really would love to go see Paul McCartney. I missed him in L.A. And then I thought I really also would love to go to New York. Yeah. And I thought Adam would also like to see Paul McCartney. Maybe Jamie would like to see Paul McCartney. So I said, why don't... Adam and Jack and I come to New York, we'll stay with you a few days, and then the four of us can go to see Paul McCartney, and that's exactly what we're doing. You know, and I was thinking about it in advance, I'm like, that's a lot, because we've got to buy tickets, you've got to get plane reservations, the timing has to match up. It just seemed like a lot of logistics, but actually... It wasn't that complicated because yeah. once you knew the date of the tour and then the, and Jack getting out of school, it was like those were the key things. And those were both known. We knew that. Yeah. 
You know what's good about it, Gretch, is we have not had one of our sister adventures in a long time, really, I think, because of COVID. So we had our yeah. whole like podcast live tour we did, yes, which was like adventure after adventure after adventure. Yes. And yeah. then we didn't see each other for like a year and a half at all, I don't think. So we haven't been able to go out and do anything really fun. Yeah, because, like, remember, like, wandering around Minneapolis? I we had know, so much fun. Like, so Detroit, great. we were like, yes. yeah, we we just parachute into these places, yeah. walk around, see all this stuff that we didn't know about. Yeah. So I'm glad we get to have a sister adventure. It'll be fun to go with Adam and Jamie. Yes. And we can cross it off the bucket list. And then I'm excited because, you know, Jack and Adam and I – you haven't been to New York for a while, so we'll get to yeah. do stuff. And June should be a gorgeous time to be there. And it's just celebrating the beginning of our summer. So it all worked out well. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. had we not, the point of the unintended consequences is, had we not watched that documentary yeah. and then yeah. had our whole obsession, we never would have even done this. And one thing I'm really excited about, Gretch, I found out online that because, you know, we both love I've Got a Feeling, that song yes. that they show the Beatles playing on the roof of their building at the end of the documentary. And yes. in this concert tour, Paul McCartney sort of does a duet with John Lennon from the documentary singing it. So it's like you see the Ooh. two of them together. So I'm I'm very excited for that moment because I know oh. we both love that song. Yeah, and it's our, so it's it's our the, song, song for the, the summer. summer. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. And then right. after this, hopefully, we'll never mention the Get Back documentary again. <laughs> I'm sure people uh, are we'll sick see. of hearing we'll about see. it. We'll see. I I feel like could keep going potentially, but it could. Time will tell. <laughs> Gretch, what is our spotlight on a tool this week? Okay, so I often talk about the four tendencies, whether people are upholders, questioners, obligers, and rebels. And as always, if you don't know what tendency you are, you can take the quiz at GretchenRubin.com slash four tendencies, F-O-U-R tendencies. It's free. It's quick. Like three and a half million people have taken this quiz. But what often people have said, and this is the tool, the quiz is, that's just a bonus tool. The actual tool is I have a flash evaluation mm. because what happens to me is that people are will often say, hey, look, I, I'm in a situation where I would really like to know someone's tendency. Like I'm a manager and I'm thinking about how to manage a team or I'm a teacher and I'm having challenges with a particular student and I want to get some ideas for how to move forward. Or I'm a doctor or a physical therapist or a nutritionist or, you know, a trainer, a physical trainer. And I want to tailor my approach to somebody because I feel like whatever I'm doing isn't quite working. And I think if I knew their tendency, I would be able to do a better job. But I'm not able to ask them to take the quiz, either because it's like we don't have time to do that. Or, you know, some people some people don't want to take a quiz. And I will often say rebels are like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take a quiz just because you tell me. Questioners are like, why am I gonna waste my time taking this quiz? Whatever. So it, for, there's a lot of reasons why people you can't or won't, or it's not polite or right. convenient to ask them to take the quiz. So what people want is, can I figure it out just from talking to them? And the fact is, yes, you can. Mm. Because, but, but it's not as so much that people give the right answer, it's you have to be listening to the pattern in how they respond. Mm. But if you know what to look, look for and listen for, it's often pretty obvious if you know. So I created something called a flash evaluation. It's just like a page long, but it tells you a couple of questions that are pretty easy to work in that you can ask and what to listen for. For instance, if somebody uses the word arbitrary, that is almost oh always a big, big sign <laughs> that they are. It's a questioner. If somebody oh, talks funny. about spontaneity and wanting to be spontaneous, like it's a big hint that the person is probably a rebel. So anyway, so that's just a that's just a flash evaluation. If if you're looking for something like that, you can go to gretchenrubin.com slash resources. And if you scroll down to the four tendencies, just look for flash evaluation. And I'll also point put the link in the show notes for people if you can go to the show notes. But this is just something I created it because so many people asked for it. So yeah. um, so I hope this is useful. I just have a quick question. If someone asks for a deadline, do you think that likely means they're an obliger? That is a question where because a lot of people use deadlines in a lot of different ways. Okay. An upholder might want a deadline because they don't want to like, I mean, that alone won't tell you. But 
if somebody says to you something like, I, I can always keep my promises at work because they're deadlines, but I can't keep my promises to myself, then I'm thinking, well, maybe it's not the deadline is so much of it. The, the deadline mm. is kind of an aspect of the accountability that you're feeling at your you're getting at the office. I see. Yeah. So so that is a question that could because here's the challenge. Often the same thing will work for different tendencies in different ways and and also all the tendencies overlap with other tendencies. Mm, and so mm -hmm. it's often easy to get someone down to two tendencies, but mm. you can, it, the problem is getting down to the one tendency. But sometimes it's just helpful to even get them down to two. When you're like, look, this person is either a rebel or a questioner, then something like a lot, like anything that smacks of micromanaging is probably not going to work for them, right. both for question reasons and rebel reasons. So anyway, oh, yeah. That's a great tool. Yeah, no, yeah, that's helpful. And now quality screen time, TV, movies, the internet, all these screens can make us happier when we watch them wisely. Elizabeth, what are you watching that's making you happier? I am watching the second season, Gretch, of Hacks. Ooh. It is, I think you said you saw the first season. I did. I and did. I didn't realize the second season dropped. Yes. It stars um, Gene Smart as a very famous comedian who's sort of struggling, you know, with the next phase of her career. She doesn't want to be irrelevant or sidelined. And she has this young woman who starts to help her um, with her writing, played by Hannah Einbinder. And it's really about their relationship as these two female comedians. And it just makes me so happy. I love it so much. I mean, it's won a bunch of awards, but I still don't know, like, how many people have seen it. But it's like Jean Smart, I mean, I love watching her because she just gets sort of better and better and better as the years yeah. go on. An interesting fact that you may not know, which is that Hannah Einbinder is the daughter of Lorraine Newman, who was on oh. the original SNL yes. cast. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's a very famous cast. Here's the thing, Elizabeth, I think is an issue for hacks is I think they mean hack like a hack comedian, but mm. also hacks often kind of makes you think of Silicon Valley. And for a long mm. time, like I got devs confused with hacks. And so I wonder if oh, like just right now, the word hacks makes people think that it's going to be more of like a techie show, more like right. a severance kind of show. Oh, interesting. Yeah. For a long time, I couldn't remember the name of the show. And I realized that's why it's because in my brain, it kept like being slotted. In the, like there was kind of a dissonance between like the title of the show. Happiness hack. Well, what is it that you love about it so much? Uh, the characters are amazing. And yeah. it's funny. Yeah, the characters. But then also they really get into the creative process. Once again, I love things yeah. that are really about the creative process. And I love seeing Jean Smart's character struggling. This season, she's trying out new material and mm. it fails over and over again. It's not as if she just goes out and she has this kind of revelation about what her act should be. And then yeah. suddenly she does it and it's a hit. She really right. suffers a lot. Uh. And it's like kind of the humiliation of like bombing, you know, is tough when you're a comedian, obviously, but it's part of it. So I just like seeing that whole process play out and how she deals with it. I think right. as somebody right. where failing is a large part of our job, <laughs> like Sarah and yes. I, many times we pitch something and it doesn't go yeah. or we try to sell a show and we don't sell it or as we have discussed get fired one of my favorite stories about you and sarah was we hadn't even started the podcast yet and it was like we were trying to think of what we were going to talk about in the first couple of episodes and, and the question came up like well could we talk about you and sarah getting fired and so you're like, well, I'll, I'll ask Sarah. I said, did you report back that you said to Sarah, is it okay if I talk about us getting fired? And Sarah paused and said, well, which time? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, we, yeah, we got fired many times. Few times. I just, I don't, Maybe I don't not many, so but a few. Right, right. More than once. <laughs> More than once. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I just love it. It both is funny and sharp and makes me feel good. Um, by the way, it's on HBO Max. Wait, so here's side note. As a TV writer, what do you think of the question of, of when a TV show drops like an, a, a season at one time mm. versus dripping them out one a week. What do you think of that? Oh, that is so tough because I think there's advantages to both. Like in the case of Hacks, I think they dropped maybe three episodes and then one a week. Um, and a lot of people mm. are doing that now to get you hooked. Oh, right. Sure. I think like the advantage of it 
The advantage is if you start watching and you love something, right, you'll just keep watching until it's finished. Yes. And yeah. now because people are sort of used to that, you can watch something and then if it's not immediately available, it just falls off your radar and you might never yeah. go back. Yeah. On the other hand, I mean, as a viewer, I notice because I'm a big binger. I will sit yeah. and binge seven episodes in a row of something that I forget. It all blurs together. Right. And yeah. I'm like, wait, what hap what episode was that? When in yeah. the season was that? Things yeah. do sort of lose impact when you watch all of it together. So I don't know as a writer kind of how I feel about that. And it's funny because like on with Fantasy Island, when we initially air, it's once a week on Fox. But then a lot of people have written us that they'll go back on Hulu and binge the whole thing. So I know people do see it both ways. And of course, mm -hmm. I, as a writer, appreciate it when somebody watching one episode feels the need to like immediately watch the next one. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if there's an answer. Well, in that show, your show, I feel like is very candy like and then it's very delicious. And then there's like a resolution and then you want more. It's like it creates that desire. Yeah. And it's not so long. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. So anyway, but yeah, I love getting a whole season at once because I like to just sit down and watch, but that's just how yeah. I am. All right, Gretchen, coming up, you are going to share a quote, but first, this break. Okay, Gretchen, what is today's quotation? Okay, this comes from a book that you and I both love, from a writer that we both love. It is from Stephen King's book about writing on writing, and he's writing about his own imagination. He wrote, a block down the hill, not far from Teddy's Market and across from Brett's Building Materials, was a huge tangled wilderness area with a junkyard on the far side and a train track running through the middle. This is one of the places I keep returning to in my imagination. It turns up in my books and stories again and again under a variety of names. Mm. Love that. Yes. Stephen King, that book, by the way, Gretchen, just for any aspiring writer, yeah. Stephen King's On Writing is a must read. Yeah, it's it's so helpful and it's a delightful read. Yes. He is such a storyteller. Eleanor is reading The Stand right now. Oh, Ooh. I read yeah. it right before the pandemic. Ooh, wow. Really? Okay. Just total <laughs> coincidence. Uh, there you go. So it says, are you feeling happier, more happier, just happier? I don't know. How are you feeling? I'm definitely <laughs> feeling more happier, Gretchen. I'm definitively more happier. I, I'm feeling happier. Okay, okay, we got both. Okay, good. There we go. Thank you to Chuck. Get in touch. Gretchen's on Twitter at Gretchen Rubin, and I'm at Elizabeth Craft. Our email address is podcast at GretchenRubin.com. And for everything related to this episode, links, photos, and more, you can see a photo of my smile necklace. Go to happiercast.com. Bye, Gretch. Bye, Elizabeth. Remember, the best time to start a happiness project is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So Elizabeth, with your circle necklace, that was like your go-to necklace. You wore it, I would say, 90% of the time when yes. I saw you, you were wearing that necklace. Do you think this is going to become your new necklace? Are you going to alternate? Like, what are you going to do? I your... am still debating that. I don't know. I think mm. I'm, I'll wear it a lot and then I'll decide. Uh, yeah. But yes, it throws it throws me into a uh, <laughs> question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 Sometimes you just, you want no, no choices. Just yes. like, you just, yeah. Yeah, but it, uh, but it's a it's a very happy choice to be able it to make. It is. Thanks for watching us here on YouTube. It really helps us if you subscribe to the show. Subscribe, and we hope you enjoy the program. From the Onward Project.